Are you ready to unlock the power of God in your life? Welcome to Hightower Ministries Podcast. I'm your host, Karen Ordine, and I, along with my husband, Bill, will bring forth prophetic preaching and teaching that will unlock a deeper revelation of God's Word. So get ready for a powerful word that will raise your faith to believe God for more in your life today. Hello and welcome to Greater Glory. I'm Kara. And I'm Bill. And we're Hightower Ministries. And we've got an awesome word for of the Lord for you today. It's time to for divine recalibration. That's right. We're going to be talking about that today. So to begin, I just want to talk about the word of God, because there is nothing else in the world like it. We understand that all scripture has been God breathed as it, it as it was being penned down. Uh, It was under the unction of the Holy Spirit. And you you think about the ones that were used to bring it forth. And you say, did they realize what was going on? Come on. I'm convinced that they sensed the breath of God on them as they wrote. Come on. Hallelujah. You know, absolutely. Whenever we're uh, studying our word, we can we can sense the Holy Spirit. Absolutely. Moving upon us and teaching us. And we're writing. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's amazing how the Holy Spirit was not only interacting with the writers, but the Holy Spirit is still to this day interacting with his readers Mm -hmm. every time that we pick up our Bible to read the word. You know, we, we are feeding on the word. He is the bread of life. And through us partaking of his word, he is the word. And we're taking in that, that hidden manna. Yeah. Amen. Come on. You know, the Lord said that it is, you know, his word is, is spirit and that it's, it's, it's his spirit really that quickens is quickening us. And as the, the flesh profiteth nothing and the words, he says, the words that I speak unto you, their spirit and their life. And we find that in John's uh, six, uh, 63. That's right. It's a living word. So when you read your word, the Holy spirit is reading you. God said, for the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. You know, and that's Hebrews 4.12. Amen. You know, your Bible is not, not an old dead letter. It's uh-huh. not just ink on a page. It's not just like any other book. What makes it different than any other book is, is that, you know, you're, you're, they are just, they're just stories that come out That's of people's, right. you know, hearts or their minds or mm-hmm. their imaginations. imaginations. But this, this mm-hmm. is, this is spirit breathed yeah. and these words are living words and the Holy Spirit ministers on us personally through the words that are on each page as the, as the Holy Spirit is leading you through, yes, you know, and every time you open your Bible, it's, it, there is a fresh breath of God in that moment mm. just for you. And, and when we open our Bibles, we're not just looking for a new word. We're not looking for a new word. You know what we're looking for? We're looking for a now Come word. On, Amen. We need a word from the Lord that is going to help us today. Yeah. One that's going to help you today. You know, the Lord said it's, it's your daily bread. Yes. You know, we need to say, Lord, Father, give us this day our daily bread. Yeah. Amen. Because he is the bread of life. Mm. And the word of God is, is the Lord. He is the word. Yes. Amen. Yes. So we're saying, give us this day our daily bread. Give us what we need today Amen. out of your word, Lord mm-hmm. Father. Oh, bread of life, mm-hmm. feed us today Come on. should be the heart cry. We, we are, we're going to be in Luke uh, today. We're, if you've got your Bibles, uh, turn to the chapter of Luke and, we, and we're going to open up with uh, chapter seven today. Amen. Yes. So chapter seven, verses one through six says, now when we had ended all his sayings, and in the audience of the people, he entered into Capernaum and a certain centurion servant who was dear unto him was sick and ready to die. And when he heard of Jesus, he sent unto him the elders of the Jews, beseeching him that he would come and heal his servant. And when they came to Jesus, they besought him instantly, saying that he was worthy of whom he uh, should do this. For he loveth our nation, and he hath built us a synagogue 
Then Jesus went to them. Amen. You know, Capernaum is is not real, really where Jesus was brought up. We know that. You know, Jesus was brought up in Nazareth. But uh, Capernaum is not where he was brought up. But it is where he lived in the early part of his ministry. And it was a coastal town, much like where we live mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. You know, and this, this centurion was much like one of the captains of the, in our military. That's right. Okay. So, um, so you know, this captain would probably would have been over anywhere from 62 to, to like 200 soldiers, you know, and that's as exactly how it is in our military. They're, right. they're over about 60 to, to 190 soldiers. Mm -hmm. And so you could think of him as like a captain. And, um, and this, this man is a, is a Gentile under the rule of, of Herod. That, you know, that, that, Antipas. yes, yeah. Antipas and that, that, you know, but he loved the Jewish people yes. and he loved the Jewish people so much that he actually paid for their synagogue to be built Come on. in this. So this is a very good man, mm -hmm. this centurion knowing he knew the Jewish uh, laws mm -hmm. and, um, and he knew that if a Jewish person walked through a Gentile's threshold, it would make that, ju that Jewish person defiled mm -hmm. and, um, and not, he didn't want to just be disrespectful to Jesus That's right. by Jesus asking him to come into his home. So it was his men that asked Jesus to come. Mm -hmm. Okay. So when he saw, you could think of it, he was probably looking out the window and saw him coming and said, wait a minute, wait a minute. And he sent Jewish messengers. He said, he sent a few people forward to, to meet Jesus and to tell him to hold on. Yes. You don't, don't, right. you don't have to come in. It says in verse six, it says, and when he was not, you know, now not far from the house, the Satarian sent friends to him saying unto the Lord, Lord, trouble not yourself, mm. for I am not worthy that thou shouldest enter unto my under my roof. Therefore, neither, you know, uh, neither thought I myself worthy. So he didn't even think of himself worthy to even ask Jesus to come. Mm -hmm. It was his, it was his men that did that. That's right. His friends that did that. He says, I, I am, um, I, I myself, what I didn't call myself worthy for you to come on to, to thee, but say the word and my servant shall be healed. Come on. So I want you to say, just say the word. Say the word. Just say the word, yes. Jesus. Amen. Just say the word, Lord. Come on. Because many times when we're asking the Lord to do this or we're asking him to do that, mm -hmm. what we're really asking him, the Lord to do is to speak for us and to speak a word over our circumstances. Amen. Come on. So we're saying, Lord, Father, speak. Yeah. Speak. Yeah. Just say the word. Amen. Come on. Because when God speaks, everything changes. Everything changes. This centurion said, you don't need to come to me and physically do anything. Just say the word and my servant will be healed. You know, he continued in, in verses eight through 10. For I also am a man set under authority, having under me soldiers. And I say unto one, go, and he goeth. And to another, come, and he cometh. And to my servant do this, and he doeth it. When Jesus heard these things, he marveled at him and turned him about and said unto the people that followed him, I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. Mm -hmm. And they that uh, were sent, returning to the house, found the servant whole that had been sick. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, this man understood authority. He did. He understood right? He understood. He understood it. Yes. And he understood something. His name. We've been given this authority in the precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And the power of his blood, of That's his right. shed blood for us. Come on. Amen. You know, this centurion understood that Jesus was the author. Come on. And that he had authority over the enemy and it would be done. What kind of faith is this? <laughs> what kind of faith is this? This is the right kind of faith. And you think about how Jesus, he marveled. That's right. That's right. He marveled. He marveled at this faith. At this faith. Because, at, yeah, this faith. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Come on. And this is the type of faith that we should have. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. When when we were, when we were praying about this message to come forth this week, I heard the, the word recalibrate. Mm. And God doesn't want us to recalibrate to man's traditions and in a church schedule of programs and, you know, and, and things like that in this time. He doesn't. No. That's not what he's, he's saying to recalibrate to. He wants us to recalibrate to who he is to us. Come on. What does his word say? Amen. And it's, it's, 
you know, as we are looking at the gospel of, of Luke, I want you, I want you to ask yourself, is this Jesus that you know? Or, or have you, uh, you know, is this the Jesus that you're, you know, as you're reading Luke and reading the Gospels, is this the Jesus that you, that you know, that you know that you know, or is it, uh, or, or have you deviated from the truth of who he is yeah. in some areas of your life? Come on. And in, in, in any, in an area that, that, you know, maybe that you've deviated from, he wants you to get that crooked thing back straight again, so that your thoughts about who he is and, and what he's capable of, of, in, of, are you're aligned, Come you're on. aligned with, with his word. Yeah, that's okay? right. Come so on. Who is, who is the real Jesus? Because the world is preaching another Jesus. Yes, they are. They're preaching a different Jesus. And it, you know, and it really baffles me that that a person can say out of their mouth that they know God, that they know Jesus and they walk with him, but they've never read their Bible. Mm. Because here's the facts. You know, there, it, there is really a, been like a separation between the spirit. They're trying like a spiritual mm -hmm. Holy Spirit worship and then the word. Mm -hmm. And you can't separate the two. That's right. He is the word. Yes. Amen. Amen. And you really can't enter into true worship without knowing who he is. Come on. Who are you worshiping? Yeah. If you don't know who he is. That's right. You know, if, if you don't read your word, you're not going to commune with the Holy Spirit, with the spirit of life, the spirit of the Lord. Mm-hmm. In the word, because and, and if you don't do that, if you don't have that communication with him, you don't have him teaching you that word and bringing his word alive in you, and you're not reading your word, you're not going to pray. Mm -mm. If, if you wake up one day and you go, I haven't prayed all week, I, I'm having a hard time praying. Well, chances are it's because you haven't picked up your Bible. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't read your word, you're not going to pray. And if you are prayer, a prayerless believer, you will not be able to really worship him. On, that's right. And if you are not able to worship him, you're not able to sing. If you can't sing a song to the Lord, then you haven't been praying, which you probably haven't been reading your word mm -hmm. because they're all tied together on a string. It's a, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a string that ties it all together. Right. So if you're, if, if you're not able to worship him, you're not going to be able to go over into that place of spirit and truth and enter into his throne room and his courts of heaven and really experience the Holy spirit moving in you and through you. Amen. So if, if you're, if you do not worship him in spirit and truth, where is your communion, your communion with God? Mm. Where is your relationship with God? Mm. And do you see how that it's, it, it, you, any one of us could backslide into completely being out of relationship with God because we gradually stopped making him important in our life, Come on. gradually stop putting him first in our life. Yeah. That's why God says, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven in my righteousness and his righteousness and everything else will be added onto you. Mm -hmm. And he also says, seek me early yeah, and you'll find me. You know, the day has a way of carrying our, carrying us away. That's right. It sure does. There's so many things to do in a day, but if we set God first as the principal relationship, the principal thing in our life and make time with him in the morning, then you know, that the rest of the day is going to be okay. It's going, to, it's going to take care of it. Yeah. Amen. That's right. So um, there, you know, there is, there is nothing, you know, at this point, if, if you got to that point of, of being away from God in that way, you're going to be empty and you're going to be void of direction and you're going to be void of peace. That's right. So if you are void of direction and you have no peace, chances are you've not been spending time with the Lord. That's right. Amen. And as a follower of Christ, we should be able to say, I know the one I'm following. Amen. Right? We gotta know him. Come on. And he's gotta know us. Absolutely. Amen. Absolutely. Our position is at his feet, receiving from him through his word, prayer, and worship. Come on. That's right. All of your intentions can be great. But if you're if you're if you're separated from God in these areas, in these three areas. Uh, you're, you're backsliding. 
and and you're in need of getting back into the heart of worship. Amen. Come on. And that is your word and prayer. That's Hallelujah. Right. Get into worship, your yeah. word and prayer. Yeah. They're all tied together. Absolutely. There's nothing in this world worth hanging on to that is worth what you could have with the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. If you're trying to hang on to things in this life, mm -mm. it's not worth it. It's not worth not anything worth it, compared to compared Jesus. Compared to what you're going to have in God. Come on. Hallelujah. Right. Because you know what? Every, every woman and every man was created with a purpose. Yeah. And your purpose and your identity is all wrapped up, you know, in, in, in being wrapped up in him. That's right. It's all wrapped up in being wrapped up in Jesus. Yeah. Who, who he's the only one that really knows who you really are, mm -hmm. right? And all wrapped up in knowing who he really is to you. Mm -hmm. So let's let's go back to Luke chapter seven. We're going to look at verses 11 through 18. We're not going to just, we're not going to read every one of them, but we're going to, we're going to go through them because we want to get to where we're headed tonight. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and, you know, we, we, we just want to look over those next eight verses there. So in Luke 7, 11, it says, and it came to pass the day after, that he went into a city called uh, Nain, and many of the, his disciples went with him and much people. Mm -hmm. And out of the city came a funeral secession, and the young man's dead body was on a makeshift cot, and they're carrying him off to this funeral. And, and in verse 12, it's, it states that he is the only son of his mother, and she's a widow, and much people of the city are with her. Mm -hmm. Okay, and, and here's this poor woman. She's already lost her husband and, and wrapped up in losing her husband is her worth and her her livelihood in, in the death of her husband. And now she's here burying her only son. And here comes Jesus. And he says to her, do not weep. Do not weep. And, and he came and he touched the bearer. That means he touched the cot. And, and, you know, they that bear him stood still. And I would say, of course, I, they would stand still because here is a Jewish man <laughs> coming and touching a cot of a dead bot with a dead body on it. Yeah. Okay. So they're probably quite taken back just by that. That's right. And, um, and, and he said, young man, I say unto thee, arise. And by verse 15, it says, and, and he that was dead sat up and began to speak. Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. Could you imagine what that moment was like? I just want you to imagine that for a moment. He's dead. And now he, he sits up and begins to speak. What do you think his first words was when he came back to life? <laughs> I, know, I mean, right? he's always like, put me down. Right. Get me off of this thing right, right now. Yeah. Right. What is going on? And, and Jesus delivers him to his mother. <laughs> and can you imagine how it was the afternoon while, you know, she's just hanging out at home and she's cooking him up some meal and, you know, feeding him. She's probably looking at him like this. Right. You know, not taking her eyes off Come of on. him. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And could you imagine? Because Jesus... He messed people up in a good way. Yes, he did. And he crashed every funeral he went to. Yeah. He just, he would just mess you up. That's right. He, and, and, and everybody would just be standing there like, this is a miracle. Yeah. How did that even happen? If he showed up, there was no longer there, a funeral. It was not going to be a funeral anymore. <laughs> so, so as we continue here in Luke 7, verses 18 through 23, we're going to talk about John the Baptist is now in prison. Okay? That's right. So, and the disciples of John showed him all these things. And John calling unto them, him two of his disciples sent them to Jesus saying, Art thou he that should come or look for we another? And when the men were coming to him, they said, John the Baptist has sent us to thee saying, Art thou he that should come or look we for another? And in that same hour, he cured many of their infirmities and plagues and of evil spirits. And unto many that were blind, he gave sight. Mm. Then Jesus answering said unto them, go your way and tell John what things ye have seen and heard, how that the blind see and the lame walk and the lepers are cleansed, mm. the deaf hear and the dead are raised. To the poor, the gospel is preached. Amen. And blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. 
not be offended in me. Come on. And Jesus is saying this loud enough for the crowd to hear him mm -hmm. and knows that they're listening. Mm -hmm. Then Jesus goes on to say, you know, who did, who did you go out in the wilderness to see? A reed shaken in the wind? <laughs> what were you looking for? Mm. And Jesus talks about that. You know, no man has ever been, he's telling them, no man has ever been on the face of the earth or on this planet at any time any, that's any great, greater than John the Baptist. And I'm telling you right now, John the Baptist was so much more than a prophet. Yeah. And, uh, and, and we go into that, the other teachings, but we do. he was so much more than a prophet. And Jesus has given him honor here. And Jesus is here ushering in. He's ushering in the kingdom mm -hmm. of heaven here on the earth. But those in the kingdom don't understand that those those in the kingdom are actually greater than John the Baptist. Right. Come on. Mm. And and John was was the la the, the last of what was considered the Old Testament prophets. Yeah. And um and he had made a way for the Messiah to come forth. He had made a way for Jesus. Yeah. And and all the while Jesus knows that John will die right there in that prison. Yes, he does. And Jesus says right after that, and blessed is he whomsoever shall not be offended in me. Mm -hmm. I want you to think about that. Jesus is ushering in the kingdom of heaven. He knows that John the Baptist is going to die in that prison. And after he tells them about these things, he says, blessed is he whomsoever shall not be offended in me. It is interesting when you think about the word offended in in the greek it's strong's g it's in the greek g 4624 and it translates scandal uh scandalizo mm -hmm. scandalizio scandalizio and and right in the middle of that word of that greek word you see the word scandal mm -hmm. it it it's to be scandalized by something mm -hmm. leaving you saying what in the world <laughs> What in the world just happened? Right. I mean, here you've got this holy prophet in the wilderness, and all of a sudden he's in prison. Okay? Yeah. And now Jesus is ushered in the kingdom. Come on. And I know that, you know, God has taken us here today because many of us are bearing offense to a scandal mm. inside of us. And here we, we knew that you know, that he could have stopped. We like, maybe, maybe God, God, we know that even when you're going through something and you're, you're being offended by something, or you have been offended by a scandal or something, we know that God could have stopped that. Or even maybe someone who died in mm -hmm. your family or close to you, where you, you prayed for them to live and God took them on home. And you know, where you know that God could have delivered maybe the loved one and, um, or healed someone, mm -hmm. or he could have opened the door or shut a particular thing. Mm -hmm. You know, we, you know, you're saying, I, we believed and look what happened. Right. And that, that kind of thing makes you feel offended. Mm -hmm. You can be offended. You know, in Luke, we see four different stories and we, we get to John here. It leaves us staring at the wall, knowing what is about to happen to John the Baptist. That's right. And, and many of us will come to a similar story in our lives where, where we're just left asking, why didn't God come through and fix it? Mm. Asking, why didn't God interfere or intervene in that situation? And how did he let this happen? Come on. So we're going to look at the definition of the word offense in the Greek. Scandalizo. To cause to stumble and fall. In, in the New uh, Testament, frig figuratively, to be a stumbling block to someone, to cause to stumble at or in something, to give a cause of offense to someone, to be offended by someone, to take offense at his character, words, conduct, so as to reject him. So there's Come only on. one, one thing uh, more that the devil wants than for you to stumble. It, it would be that you stumble at something that Jesus did mm, or on. Jesus wow. did, or God did, or God didn't do. Right. Because when the enemy causes you to stumble, you can blame the devil and go tell Jesus about it. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. But what do you do if you get offended 
at what God has done or has not done or a person does. And I think that everyone in our, in our, in, in the world at one time or another will ask the Lord, why didn't you do something about that? And I don't understand. Right. But when you get in that place where you're saying to the Lord, now I I've got to be honest, you know, I'm, I'm stumbling over you. When you say that to the Lord in your prayer, most of us will have that kind of experience. You know, it maybe you're sitting here and you're sitting in a situation and you're saying, I'm imprisoned in this situation while you're out doing something totally different, Lord. You're doing you're doing all these things for everyone else, but I'm still sitting in this place and I feel imprisoned. I'm, I'm just sitting here. And you say, God, you know, I thought we were tight. I thought, I thought we understood one another. But right now I'm not feeling like like that at all. Yeah. You know, so in this story, can you imagine how John the Baptist was feeling in prison as he spent his whole life dedicated into paving the way for the gospel, paving the way for the Messiah to come forth. And now he's imprisoned. Yeah, that's right. So he's sending his 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 disciples to come and ask, are you really him? Mm -hmm. John the Baptist is trying to recalibrate. Yes. Is it you? Mm -hmm. So, you know, where's John, you know, his so are his followers. So we're going to, we're going to tell you something that's so important and you've got to get this. The only way that you can recalibrate, the only correct, uh, accurate way to recalibrate is to look at the book. Come on. Come on. Right. W remember when, when we looked at the definition of recalibrate, it means that when we have deviated from the standard, we have to use the measuring tool to get back to the original standard. That's right. right. Amen. And, and with God, you know, his word is the standard. Mm -hmm. He is the word. And we have to get back to the word to fix the areas that we've deviated from God's standards of living. Come on. You don't get to just pick and choose what part of the word that you want to believe and receive. Mm -mm. It's not up for discussion. Mm -hmm. This is your, this is the book of life. Yeah. He is the word. So if you reject any part of the word, you're actually rejecting God himself. Mm -hmm. So we've got to get back to the word in those areas of where our, our view has gotten clouded of who he is as good father, mm -hmm. as, as our provider, as our healer, mm -hmm. as our weight maker, as our just judge, as our sav savior. As our closest friend that's going to stick with us closer to the, than a brother mm -hmm. that will never forsake us. You know, in our Bibles, the, you know, there are prophecies of his coming and there are types and shadows that we can see that he is fulfilled throughout, throughout the Old Testament. That's right. But what we are talking about here today is it's time to recalibrate and ask yourself deeply look in within and say, who is Jesus in my family? Who is Jesus in your immediate family? Who is Jesus in your health? Who is Jesus in your business adventures? Who's Jesus in your personal finances? Who is Jesus in the nation? Who is Jesus in the world today? And who is Jesus when you are standing by yourself and feeling alone, who is he to you? Mm. And some of you right now are saying that this is a, you know, it, this is a principal teaching. I could go on and I, I already know all these things. But let me tell you something. What we have found is that most of the time, the people that need to hear this type of thing the most are the ones that have been walking with God all their lives mm -hmm. because they deviate and they get off track and they've never come back and recalibrated after disappointments. Then instead, they adapt what they believe about who Jesus is to their circumstances and their disappointments instead of going back to the word and recalibrating what they think yeah. and believe about him. And what the Bible says about him, what he says about himself and who he is to you. Come on. And allow the Holy Spirit to teach you the truth. Again, we don't ever get to arrive at a truth and believe that, that, that you're not going to have to revisit that thing. Because it's going to get tested. And so every time we get to a disappointment, we're going to have to come back to recalibrate. That's right. Amen. 
we're, you know, we're not saying that, you know, that uh, th these people that they get off track are no longer believers. No. Mm -mm. We're, we are saying that they no longer have great ex expectations of the Lord. Their faith is getting diminished by every disappointment because they won't go back and recalibrate. And they are the very ones that, that are actually operating a lot of times under a religious spirit. And they get into a place where they, every time that this a person that is full of zeal of the Lord and that will not bend on their faith and is saying, I'm going to stand with God no matter what he does. Yeah. They, they're they the first ones that want to go over there and run it and, and throw a, an ice bucket of cold water on them and put their flame out in the spirit because they have already deviated and they won't recalibrate. Yeah. Yeah. And it's easier for them to believe that God doesn't do that anymore mm -hmm. than to believe that God didn't do that for them. Right. That's right. Come on. Come on. This is real stuff. This is real stuff. And these people have begun to define him differently and change the rules in their minds as to what can and cannot happen in this day. And they think that their circumstances are king. Mm. And, and they're looking at everything based out of their circumstances instead of looking at how little their circumstances are through the lens of how big our king is. Come on, Jesus. Just because they haven't seen someone get healed of a crippling disease, they have no faith for it, right? And they think that God doesn't do it anymore. Come We're on. telling you right now, he does do it. We've seen him do it. And their theology is not biblical. Our God has not changed. Come on. Malachi 3, 6 says, For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. If he changed, we would be consumed. That's right. Quickly. Yes. But better he, believe it. He changes not. And so we're asking you to get into the New Testament and recalibrate. Because the only accurate way to really recalibrate is to look at the book. Yeah. You've got to get in your word. The Old Testament was given to us by him. And he affirmed that the that you know that the word that he, you know, in that word and his word that he came to the earth to, and he fulfilled all of those Old Testament prophecies. Come on. He fulfilled it right here. And, and he talks about it in, in the book of Luke. Why don't you tell us? Come on, this Luke says? 24, 44 through 53 says, and he said unto them, Jesus, come on. These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses. Yeah. Come on, there it is. And in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me, then opened he their understanding, right? Yeah. That they might understand the scriptures and said unto them, thus it is written. And thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. And that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. And ye are witnesses of these things. Yes. And behold, I send the promise of my father upon you. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. Come on. Hallelujah. And he led them out as far as Bethany, and he lifted up his hands and blessed them. And it came to pass while he blessed them, he was parted from them and carried up into heaven. Come on. Right in front of them. Yes. And they worshiped them and returned to Jerusalem with great joy and were continually in the temple praising and blessing God. Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. <laughs> yes. We, we preach the word here at High Tower yes, Ministries. Here, you know, there's many motivational speakers out there that are parading themselves as preachers. Come on. You know, I, you've got to say, this is the yep. word. This we is, need the word. Yeah. It's Amen? the word that we need. It's the word. It's the word. It's the word. It's mm -hmm. the word that will recalibrate you. It is the Holy Spirit that will reveal revelation to you and yep. show you that you, you, you what you've got to apply to your current situation yep. out of the word and how it applies. It's the Holy Spirit that does that. Come on. So as we are bringing this message to a close today, we are challenging you to pick up your word and begin to read reading, mm. begin reading at Matthew 1, 1, and do not change 
change the flow of your Bible reading. I mean, you can take and go through the Bible reading we've got online with Hightower Ministries as a separate thing, but we're challenging this group. We're challenging our viewers here that in, in all around the world to pick up right there in Matthew 1, 1, and don't stop reading your daily reading until you get all the way through Revelations 22, 21. Come on. And then we want you to ask yourself, who is mm. Jesus? Mm. And I'm telling you what the word says in the New Testament, that is Jesus. Yeah. Even in Old Testament, I'm just saying the word tells us who Jesus is. Yeah. And it is not about what the world says that he is. Mm. Amen. We, we need teachers and evangelists and pastors and prophets and apostles, but you are not going to be able to point your finger at the fivefold ministry when you get to heaven and say, I didn't know. Ooh, come on. Because the Lord's going to look at you and go, really? Mm -hmm. You had a Bible, didn't you? Ooh. I recall you had a Bible for 20 years. Yeah. Or I had, recall you had a Bible for 50 years. <laughs> Listen. You, you are responsible to read it. He said, take, partake of it daily. Yeah. And, and it's your responsibility to recalibrate often, Come on. especially when you've gotten a disappointment, mm -hmm. especially when you're going through a trial mm -hmm. or a hard place. That's when you need the, the word and the Lord the most. Amen. It's not time to go run and hide and get in a cave. That's right. It's time to run to the Lord. That's Amen. Right. That's right. So I'm going to say something to you right now that most preachers, they know it, but they're, they're too afraid to say it because a lot of them are so seeker friendly. They don't want, they just want to make people feel good. They don't want to offend anybody, mm -hmm. but I'm going to, I want to tell you something, you know, that's because that's not who we are. The biggest problem we have in the church today is that people don't read their Bibles. Mm -hmm. Much of the church, but they, they the people that are confessing Christ, they are they are saying, "I'm a born again believer." Yeah, are biblically illiterate. Yeah, that is the biggest problem we have in our church today, and we've got to stand up and be be real about it, and be truthful about it, mm -hmm. and say, "You know what? I've got a responsibility in this relationship, and it's not all spiritual, like uh, all worship with no word." Yeah, it's both. Yeah, okay. And um, it, because people don't know their word, therefore they they really don't know their God. No, nope, and right. so they think his standards are lax. They think he winks at sin. They think he's uh, he's this way, and there's not he's completely not mm -hmm. because they don't know him. Mm -hmm. Come on, and, and 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 there's some people that have were once really close to the Lord. They 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 had their devotionals with him all the time, and and then they stopped making time for God in their daily in their daily life. And you know, over time, you forget who He really is, and your circumstances become little g gods in your life because you you've allowed or, or they have allowed the natural to dictate their life instead of allowing the Word to dictate your life. Come on. The God's promises. Yeah. You're not, they're not standing on anything at, at that point. Yeah. You know, we call the word of the Lord, the whole canon of the word canon. Listen to what that means. Canon. It means anything straight used to examine other things. <laughs> this is a whole canon of the word. It's, it's, it's used to examine other things as a tongue or a needle of a balance. A plumb line in a building. The word of God is your plumb line. The word is given as a technical term to, to the accepted books of the Bible considered, and it's considered inspired of the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. Every word is breathed. Mm -hmm. God breathed. Right. So the word of God is the standard of our living. It is where we go when we need recalibration, when we need to know where, you know, where we're, we, we deviated from the truth of who he is in our lives and, and where our circumstances are not lining up and we need to get things right so that we can be blessed. Amen. How many of you have let go of, of the miraculous? I mean, think about it. Or maybe uh, you know some people that have let go of the miraculous because they can't handle the mysterious. Mm -hmm. Listen, we we serve a God that has, he's, he's a God of mysteries. Right. And he loves to be sought out as hidden treasure. Mm -hmm. Even in, in Jeremiah 33, 3, he says, ask of me and I will reveal mysteries to you. Come on. You know, God is big on vision, but he's light on details. 
And he wants us not only to wait on the timing and wait on it, but he wants us to wait in his presence and ask him of the mysteries. Amen. Because he longs to have that communing with us. Mm -hmm. So he keeps us coming back for more and more for the details. We all have vulnerabilities, okay? And none of us is without need of recalibration. Every single one of us needs recalibration. Come on. Often. Often. You know, what did he say in Matthew? Jesus said in Matthew 28, 20, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Amen. Come on. Amen. That means let it be so. That is, it, let, let it be, be written. So. Let it is. He says, I'm with you always. Lo, I am with you always. That's right. I never leave you or forsake you. That's right. I never physically leave you, and I'm not going to turn my heart away from you. That's right. And Isaiah 55, 8 says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. Amen. But you know, we can never forget that his word is the plumb line for our lives. Amen. Amen. So let's pray as we Absolutely. bring this to a close. Yes. Hallelujah. Lord Father, we just thank you right now. Lord God, that you are bringing us to a place of recalibrating, yes, Father. Lord Father, and, and, and coming back to that plumb line, Lord Father, coming back to your word, coming back to that heart of worship, coming back to the truth of who you are, mm. Lord Father, who you are in our health and who you are in every circumstance in our life, who you are, Lord Father, you are king over all, Lord Father, yes, and there God. is nothing impossible for you. Mm. Lord Father, we ask you right now to draw every person that hears this word, Lord God, hears this message into that deep place. Place with you, Lord yes. Father, they would come into a place of recalibration, come Lord on. Father. Yes. Come back again to the truth of the knowledge of who you are and who you created them to be. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. 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 We thank you for joining us here at High Tower Ministries International for our Greater Glory <laughs> broadcast. We hope this show has been has edified and encouraged you in the Lord. And, and we want you to reach out to us and share your comments with us. And if you have a personal prayer request, please send them to us at prayer requests at HightowerMinistry.org. Amen. And get connected with us by registering with us on our website. And you're going to receive a free download at HightowerMinistry.org. And uh, look us up. Look us up on YouTube and subscribe. Hit that button. Hit that bell. Subscribe. We have broadcasts. Uh, that go out four times a week right here on Facebook. So look for our Greater Glory prophetic teaching every Sunday at 9 a.m. and 7 p.m. and Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And of course, we have Testimony Tuesdays each and every Tuesday evening at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Amen. Don't miss Testimony Tuesdays. It's wonderful as well. And, and look us up on Charisma because we're also on Charisma at Hightower Ministries Podcasts. So if you've ever listened to a podcast, you can find us anywhere you listen to podcasts at Spotify, Apple Podcasts, iTunes, mm -hmm. Audible, uh, cpnshows.com. On, on your computer or wherever you listen to your podcast at. So we invite you to, to like and follow us on Facebook, yes. share us with your friends so that you don't miss a show. Absolutely. So thank you for joining us today. And don't forget to share this with your friends. And until next time, be blessed. Be blessed. Thank you for listening to the High Tower Ministries podcast. Our shows are broadcast each week on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. For more information about this ministry and to acquire our resource materials for spiritual growth, visit our website at www.hightowerministry.org. Look for Hightower Ministries on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Get connected with us. We would love to hear how the Lord is moving through this ministry and how the Word of God is impacting your life. Until next time, be blessed. And please don't forget to rate and review on Apple Podcasts and subscribe wherever you listen so you don't miss a show.